Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Kansas 16X. But before that, this video is brought to you by Evil Reg and Greg Musen. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Kansas 16X map found over the Farming Simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for PC players only. Now, of course, this map will not be released on console. We've never seen a 4X map get released and stay for console. So a 16X map is way out of the question. And it's my understanding that the reason for that is the save game file size is just going to be way too big. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the vast lands of Kansas. This huge 16X map offers the perfect experience for large scale farming operations with vast fields reminiscent of the endless farmlands of Kansas. Growing your giant farms by cultivating any endless lands, pushing the boundaries of agriculture, and maximizing your production. Whether alone or with friends, this map offers great opportunities for farmers on all levels. Now, I'll tell you, that would be quite a challenge to play this map alone. Have fun. Are you ready for your new farming adventure? Jump in your tractor and start ruling this vast land that is reminiscent of Kansas. There is a important warning. The premium expansion is required, and that is because there are some premium expansion productions built into the map. Some areas are activated after purchasing the land. On this map, you'll find two pre-placed farms, the main farm that you own at the beginning and another farm with silos. There are also three additional farms that you must first purchase the land to use. The main two farms with starting vehicles and equipment will have one large field with garages and silos. Lands that you will first purchase will be have a cow barn, horse barn, sheep, and pig barn. So that would be the farms that you must buy ahead of time. This map includes 20 farm plots, 15 very large fields, four fields with grass missions, one BGA, traffic, pedestrians, four new fruit types in Plum, pear, apple, and apricots. There are purchase points for items from the platinum and premium DLCs. Animal dealer, a large greenhouse for green peppers, cucumbers, onions, and watermelons. Grape and olive fields that come ready planted. And well, this map includes a plethora of productions and sell points. This map also does have some required mods. They are the wind turbine package, hall with cooling chamber, package mega silo, Wide Garage, Large Hall Potato, Lizard Cow Barns, Sheds Pack, Farmer's Market, Large Package of Houses, Sheep Barn, Orchards and Greenhouses, American Midwest Maintenance Shop, American Midwest Cold Storage, and American Midwest Fertilizer Shed. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. I will tell you, if you load this map up in the farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find all the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farm mode. In addition, you do have starting machinery in all game modes. What you do not do is you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. So if you do wish to play in that mode, you will need to buy all of the land that you wish to use. I also will tell you that I loaded this map up on a system with low end integrated AMD graphics, and I was getting frames in the 50s when I first loaded into various areas, but it eventually did settle down to around 60. So I'd say if you are careful with not packing too much stuff in any one particular area, as far as vehicles or machinery, then this map should play okay on lower end PC systems. As you can see, this is gonna take quite a while to load up. So you do wanna make sure you do have ample graphics memory as well, because again, we are loading a fair bit of things into memory. When we load for the very first time, we start here at our main starting farm. We do have a sleep trigger right here at the front door. And let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And as the description said, there are some extremely large fields on this map. Remember what you're seeing here on the PDA is 16 times a standard map. So we have four maps wide, 
four maps tall, and then basically there are 16 maps to fill in the grid. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in FS22. In addition, if you do have the premium expansion enabled, well, you will have red beets, carrots, and parsnips. If we take a look at our farmland screen, we start up at a farmland ID 1. That is the main starting farm. That also is going to include a fair bit of land, 208 hectares to be exact. We also have the arable farm at farmland ID 14. That can be bought for $273,360. The main farm and field can be bought for $11 million. Mm-hmm, $11 million. In addition, we also own farmland ID 15 at the start. That can be bought for $1.3 million. Now, as far as the additional farms, we have a horse and chicken farm at located at farmland ID 3. That includes a large field. That can be bought for $20.5 million. We have a pig and sheep farm at farmland ID 16. That can be bought for $877,000. We also have a cow farm at farmland ID 17 for $772,000. There are several um, orchards at farmland ID 18. That can be bought for $6.4 million. There is a few greenhouses at farmland ID 20. And then there is a production facility here at farmland ID 19. And that can be bought for $23,800. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Farmland ID 9 is 1,673 hectares. Has two fields. And it's going to cost you $83 million. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to take a while to buy this map. That's for sure. Let's go and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Field 11 is 1,190 hectares in size. Looks like the smallest field on the map is going to be a mere 47 hectares in size. As far as the precision farming soil map, this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. Given the vast majority of this map is agriculture land, we get a very, very clear picture of what that generic soil map looks like. Fields to the north are going to be a mix of Mostly silty clay and loam with a little bit of sandy loam and loamy sand mixed in. That trend is also to the south of the center of the map. Meanwhile, the center of the map is going to be mostly loamy sand and sandy loam. With respect to our crop counter, we do have the standard FS22 crop counter available to us on this map. And with respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops as well as our animal outputs in eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage chase straw and grass. That trend continues down with respect to all of the base game production items as well. So we do indeed have the ability to sell all of those. With respect to lime, we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we do not have the ability of processing our stones. So if you are insane and you have stones enabled on this map, you will need to do something with respect to processing your stones. With respect to the farm production pack, we do not have the ability of selling a washed root crop. And with respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell platinum expansion things. It's just kind of interesting because I was pretty sure the description said we would. Now, with respect to the premium expansion, we do indeed have the ability to sell premium expansion productions and crops. With respect to pumps and hoses, if again, if you are crazy enough to do pumps and hoses on this map, well, you will have the ability to sell your separated manure. As far as additional productions, we have apples, pears, apricots, plums, green peppers, cucumbers, onions, watermelons, apple juice, apricot jam, plums, ketchup, strawberry juice, pickles, and compost. Notice none of those have sell points. So we will need to look in build mode to see if we can put our own sell point down. But what's up with that? We have added crops, but apparently no place to sell those added crops. 
We also have fruit and vegetable fertilizer. And then if you are playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability to sell our hay and straw pellets. With respect to our starting fleet, all of our machinery is owned. None of it is leased and is all fairly well maintained. We do start out with a pigsty, chick coop, and horse barn, even though we don't technically own those lands. This map does have contracts available to us. And we also do own several productions at the start. We own a sugar mill, a cereal factory, an oil mill, bakery, dairy, and the soup factory, as well as the spinnery, tailor shop, and preserved food factory. We own all of those factories at the start in new farmer mode. And with respect to collectibles, this map does not have any. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland T7 315HD tractor. We have the John Deere 8R410, the T8435 Genesis, and the Fent 942 Vario large tractors. We have the Kloss Lexion 8900 harvester, just a single harvester. We have the Convaflex 1380 grain header. We also have the Bergman HTW65 trailer, the Flegel TMK27-3 trailer, and then a pair of Brantner DD. 24073-2XXL trailers. Actually, we have three of those trailers. We have the PW1012, or it's the 112 plow. We have the Rostel, Rostel Mash K12200 cultivator, as well as the Corlon, uh, let's we'll just go with the Lemkin 9840 cultivator. We have the Saitan 15001C Cedar and the Rapid A800S Cedar. We have the Kinsey 4905 Blue Drive Planter. We have the Aon 5200 Delta Force Herbicide in Liquid Fertilizer Sprayer. The Fence Squadra 1290 HD Square Baler. And then the Arcusen FSX 6372 Square Bale Bale Trailer. Again, we do not have any leased items. Now, as far as our farm goes here, we can sell everything and anything on not only this farm, but all of the farms. So all of the farms are completely and totally customizable. A lot of our machinery is stored here in this large shed. We have another large machine shed here, which does have a service trailer or service trigger. And the service trigger is not necessarily marked out, but it does appear to basically span the majority of the inside of this building. Then next door, we have another large shed and this is where we're going to find the rest of our machinery. And that's pretty much the starting farm. Now, Kansas isn't a flat map. You see we do have a bit of a hill going up there to the west. You also see we have a bit of a hill over here to the southwest. So the southeast over there, as well to the north. Now, before we get on more with the farm tours, I want to check build mode. We do have several required mods, so of course we're going to see those in the build mode. But what I want to go to here is going to be our cell points. So here we have an orchards and greenhouses sell point let's go ahead and put that down we have our farmers market sell point here as well it does not appear to be for our individual um orchards but this one this one that we put down should be let's go back here and check our factories we should have the ability to put down all of those custom factories The orchards and greenhouse production plant that is pre-placed. 
far as the ground textures go, fairly standard looking ground textures and fairly standard plants. Come back up here to our prices screen. We now have the ability to sell all of these items, which we couldn't earlier, which is a little bit frustrating. I would like to have seen this farmer's market area replaced on the map or things set up such that you don't have to put down your own sell point. Now I did enable a fast fly mode. So we are flying down here to farmland ID 14. This is farmland that we do own at the start. And over here we have another large building. We have our large silo complex. So we have our dump point here. And then we have our fill pipe right there. And then we have a large machine shed here as well. And that is pretty much the arable farm, if you will, here at Farmland ID 14. We're making our way over to now the horse and chicken farm. That is a part of Farmland ID 3. We have a standard FS22 chicken coop and sheep area. So 360 chickens. We have our food dump. And then around the corner, we're going to have our egg point. We have a horse area. 14 horses available in here. We have our food trough for our horses. Now we have another large machine shed. This one has a silo inside. So we have our dump point. And we have our fill point for that silo complex. We have bale and pallet storage, 250 bales and pallets. And then we have some large storage here. These are not silage bunkers, so we're gonna be able to use those for root crops or anything else. And that is pretty much the chicken and horse farm. Now this is also land that we own at the start, sparsely forested. And we have a biogas plant located on this land. So we have the Elm Creek biogas plant, two large three-sided silage bunkers, and a large machine shed. Something I didn't check is if I can sell this, and it looks as if I cannot sell that. Now we have a peak, oh, not a peak, a pig and sheep farm located up here at Farmland ID 16, which is in the middle of field 12. Two hundred and seventy pigs here. And we have our food trough. And of course on the other side of this building we're gonna have our slurry point. Then inside of here we have our sheep area. And I had to look to see, and I hadn't purchased this farm yet, and that's why this trigger wasn't popping up. So we have our food dump for our sheep. That's why also we couldn't open the building. And now we can. 
There were sheep drop off for 450 sheep. And then our wool spawn point is going to be right here. Now we have to make our way just south of field 11 to get to the cow farm. Here we can see where we have field 11. It's got a pretty sizable hill associated to it. Now, of course, for whatever reason, the base game loves to make large fields root crops. So, of course, the largest field on this map is, of course, going to be planted in carrots. Now, back there, we were right at the top of the hill, running on top of the hill, but now you can see how much lower the ground is on this side of the field. So a nice machine shed. We have slurry storage. We have a manure heap off in the distance. Then we have our cow farm, our cow barn. With our cow buy point. 300 cows available here. We have our milk trigger, our straw trigger, and our slurry trigger. We do have a pull-through silage bunker. And a nice bale or machine shed there. Then this one is going to be our robot feeder. So we have hay, straw, silage, and mineral feed along the side. Or if we wish to manual feed, we can do that from inside here. Now, I did go ahead and buy some other lands. Here we have various fruit orchards. These are all productions. So let's come back here and check out our productions now. So in addition to the productions that we've already ran through, where we stopped at the Preserve Food Factory, we have a large greenhouse, Advanced. It's going to take water, fruit and vegetable fertilizer, and compost. And it's going to make tomatoes, organic waste, lettuce, strawberries, green peppers, cucumbers, and onions. We have a second large greenhouse that's going to require the same inputs. And it's going to output watermelon and organic waste. We have our fruit and vegetable processing plant, which we have already purchased. And again, that's going to be available at Farmland ID 19. The orchards are here at Farmland ID 18. And the... Fruit and vegetable processing plant will take apples, apricots, sugar, plums, tomatoes, green peppers, strawberries, cucumbers, and onions, and produce apple juice, organic waste, apricot jam, plum jam, ketchup, strawberry juice, and pickles. Now, we are right here at our orchards. Our orchards are all going to require water, fruit and vegetable fertilizer, and compost. And we are going to produce apricots, pears, apples, and plums. Now let's come back here because I didn't go and check mods and DLCs earlier. This map does not have any mods and DLCs included with it, but of course we do have compost and fruit and vegetable fertilizer that is a part of the orchards and greenhouses mod. So we have our pallet spawn point, our interactive icon, our water point, our dump point for our compost, and for our liquid fertilizer. So we have all four of these here. Now this area, I don't really know what this area is supposed to be. It kind of looks like it should be maybe four grapevines, but there's, there's collisions here. And the collisions look like grapevines, but they don't visually appear. And I don't really understand what might be going on there. And I also don't understand what might be going on here, unless these are supposed to be somehow olive trees so i'm a little confused as to what 
this area is and what this area is but both have collisions that you can't go through them I have turned up my flight speed a bit so we are flying around a bit faster than normal here we have those advanced greenhouses we have a pallet spawn point we have our water we have our dump point for compost for fill point for organic waste and for water and we have another greenhouse right there our main starting farm is directly ahead and we're looping back to our main starting farm because that's where I want to start then the main fly around portion of this video kind of do an aerial tour so we have our main starting farm here we've already been to the east right so up there we had our orchards we had our greenhouses there. We've talked about the cow farm. Let's make our way now to the southeast corner of the map. And while we're making our way over there, let's talk about some score. We're going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. We have 18 productions built into this map. We have a sugar mill, a cereal factory, an oil mill, bakery, dairy, the soup factory. We also have our apple, pear, apricot, and plum orchards. We have two large greenhouses. We have the spinnery, a tailor, a fruit and vegetable processor, preserved foods factory, and then the BGA and the grain mill. So then here we have a cell point for logs and wood chips. Right, so we have the dump point and we have our wood cell icon. So we have make our way across the southern edge of the map. See we have some more inclines here. With respect to the ability to sell all of our base game, procs, animal outputs, and productions, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of those things. Now I should I should think about taking a point off or some type of points off with respect to the fact that we can't sell apples, pears, apricots, plums, or any of the production outputs that the orchard and fruit productions mod makes without putting down, oops, sorry, without putting down the, um, the farmer's market sell point that should have been pre-placed for us. Even though it's only $5,000, we shouldn't have to put those things down. But we don't take off points for not being able to sell included things. We take points off for not being able to sell base game things. So here we have our dump point. This is going to be a rain sell point. We have our vehicle shop. So this is the Elm Creek vehicle shop. So we have our dealer trigger and we have our dealer buy point and we have a very large area for our vehicles and equipment to spawn and a decent sized area for them to get out onto the road with to the south of the dealership we have our oil mill standard fs22 oil mill so we have our dump point we have our interactive icon and we're gonna have our pallet spawn point around the front here we have a fuel point we have our animal dealer so we have our buy point for our animals here then we have our animal dealer cell point on the other side of the fence. 
We have our sugar mill. Dump point, pallet point on the back. Interactive icon here on the front. We have our cereal factory. Right there. All of our triggers on the same side. Let's make our way back up to the north. We have our spinnery. And then this is going to be our fruit and vegetable orchard processing. So we have our pallet spawn point, our interactive icon, and our dump point. We have our tailor. Here we have our bakery. So we have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point. And then our interactive icon here at the back door, side door. We have our dairy. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point and pallet spawn point. And we have a farmer's market dump points. North of field 14. This is where we're going to find our A cell point. We have a bowling alley cell point. And then we have our fruit and or basically our our vegetable canning operation. So we have our dump point here, our pallet spawn point, and our interactive icon around the back door. We have our soup factory. So we have our dump point, our interactive point. And then on the side, we have a loading door where our pallets are going to spawn. And now we're going to make our way once again across the map. Except this time, we're not going to go to the south part of Field 11. We're going to go to the central area of Field 11 to the last set of interesting points. Now, buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Overall, yes, they are. Um, a few areas where I feel that they're not. We do have the new windows where we have the 3D windowing going on. And that has qualified that building for the new texturing technique. So we are going to say a full point there. And we'll have to wait till we get to our last set of point of interest over here by field 11 to give the final point or a fraction of the final point. And we have our grocery cell point located right here. We have a restaurant cell point located right there. And then we have another restaurant cell point right there then we have another grocery cell point right here so we're going to take a quarter of a point off with respect to trigger and interactive areas clearly marked because some of these maintenance sheds where we have our workshop triggers they don't have those areas clearly marked and i would like to have seen that on those buildings and while i do know that those buildings are not a building that the map author has created he has chosen to include those in the map so therefore deducting points off because of a shortcoming of those buildings is going to be fair game in my opinion
So that's going to wrap this map up with a score of 4.75 out of 5. This map is going to be ideal for multiplayer. I would not see anyone trying to use this map in single player just because of how massive these things are. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to load this field up with harvesters, set course play upon them, automate unloading the harvester, and then go to bed and hope up and hope in the morning that some part of the field is done. Is that really playing the game? I don't feel like it is. I feel like to play the game, you have to be somewhat directly involved and setting a bunch of workers off and then kind of going off and doing your own thing is basically just consuming electricity. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to, are you willing to give this a challenge on single player? Or are you maybe gonna look about loading this thing up on multiplayer? And until the next time, happy farming.